Is it better to do a f- to football train after or before gym? Great question, Caitlin. And there's definitely some different philosophies in this, but typically for Australian rules footballers for the majority of the year, we'll do our lower body strength work, which is what I think that you're referring to, uh, after our work on the field, um, mainly because of priority. So we want to prioritise the football, the tactical, technical side of things over the physical side of things. Uh, so what we know with from a physical development point of view is the change of direction work and the high intensity efforts on the field far out while the demands on the body in the gym. So from a um, risk to benefit ratio, from a performance point of view, the tactical side of things, so making sure that we're cognitively fresh as well as um, from a technical point of view, so our ability to execute skills, um, we want to do those things first. Top five physical attributes for an inside midfielder. Great question, Harry. I would say uh, developing your aerobic capacity, uh, so your ability to be able to handle high volumes of running. You know, uh, Midfielders can typically cover anywhere between 10 and uh, up to 14 Ks of, of total distance, um, but also you want to be able to be able to do repeat high intensity efforts. So um, being able to be recovered enough to be able to produce force quickly. So thinking like your first three steps, how well you can do that, not only in the first quarter, but also the fourth quarter. So that's where repeat speed sessions are really, really important. So aerobic capacity, repeat speed, change of direction ability. So making sure you're mobile through the hips and the ankle so you can uh, have fluid change of direction ability and also your technique is sound to change direction laterally. That would be the third. How often should you do speed and agility training for football? This will very much depend on where you are in season, off season, pre season, uh, Chloe. Um, but typically, uh, in season, which is where most footballers are at the moment, VFLW, AFLW, and the AFL and VFL men's program are all in season. So we'll go with that. Um, so I would say for our speed work, we do speed exposure typically once a week, um, and that's in training. And then you'll get another hit in games. So um, typically, you just get exposure to max velocities and a little bit of top up speed distance, sprint distance. If you didn't get a lot from the game prior, um, and then we keep that topped up just to keep up your chronic exposure, um, which is just your week four weekly average um, intact, and then some high velocity exposure as well, just to keep the body um, prime for this week's game. So we'll do that on your main training session. What are some of the best methods to preventing hamstring injuries? Um, what we know with hamstring injuries is as we age, you're at higher risk. You can't prevent aging, of course. Um, then the, the other likelihood of injury is having a history of hamstring injuries. So we want to try and prevent hamstring injuries as best we can. So I love the fact, Sean, that you're asking questions around how to prevent because you are at higher risk as you age and you're also at higher risk as once you've had a hamstring injury. So we want to try and prevent them as best we can. Um, eccentric strength training, the research is strong on this. That's why the Nordic hamstring exercise is very popular. If you don't know what that is, just search it. Uh, hamstring injury prevention playlist on our YouTube channel. We've got the Nordic exercise demonstration on there, both Nordic and weighted Nordics. Really good way to isolate the uh, eccentric portion of basically lengthening our hamstrings under load. Why warm-ups need to be intentional, engaging, and effective. And these are some of the key areas that I focus on and it's almost some rules that I stick to when I'm planning my warm-ups. And that's the first one. I want to make sure warm-ups are intentional, they're planned, but also you're able to read the cues and understand the state of the group and what they need best to prepare themselves for the upcoming football session, which is probably the most important thing. The warm-up needs to take into account what is the session for that day. Is it our main football session? Is it more our craft fundamental recovery session? So understanding what's ahead for the athlete so you can prepare the group for that. Um, we want to make sure that we're also having some fun uh, and that the athletes are enjoying themselves, they're engaged. So some tips and tricks around that is including games like touch rugby, uh, soccer, dodgeball, uh, these reactive competitive games that are different to football 